Okay, we've got a plethora of suggestions. Now, I'm going to go first with mine, which is the Apple TV. Then we're going to do Barry's. What we talked about last month at the meeting is that rather than devoting a meeting to new um, updates that come in, we're going to cover those under Share a Tip or Favorite Apps, uh, which and Barry's going to be covering today, five iOS 16 quick tips. There are so many things in iOS 16 that have changed for the better. Is what, over a 1,000 changes? I, I, I can't keep up with it, but, I mean, they're all tremendous, and they're all non-intrusive. You, you can keep doing business the way you've been doing, but they've added things to it. So the first one, for those who own an Apple TV, I asked you to discover another trick that works like a champ. If you have an Apple TV, you have in What's Next, which is a bar of programs that you've either added to or you started watching. Right, and this is anywhere you can see, either continue watching or what's next. What's If it says what's next, definitely is supported. Continues might support it. So let's say you started watching a show and you didn't like it. Well, it, they're in what's next. How do you get rid of it? If you go to the what what's next bar and highlight it with a long press, it brings up a sub-menu of things you can do, such remove it. Market is watched. May, Pretend that I never even watched this show, which is what I do a lot. Yeah, continue. Um, so that's available to you to clean up that bar, which heretofore you've never been able to do. If you're in YouTube on the Apple TV, you can do the same thing with on, the, on any of the bar lines. You can go up and add it to a playlist without watching it. You can just go long press and it brings up a sub menu of including I'm not interested and you can remove it. Not documented anywhere that I've been able to find. I even went to the Apple TV user's guide. No mention of this at all. Okay, so now we got, we're going to do the five quick tips. It's a video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello, this is Barry, and I've got five iOS 16 quick tips. So if you've upgraded your iPhone to iOS 16, these tips are for you. First off, iOS 16 adds the capability for you to see and either copy or speak your Wi-Fi password. To do that, you have to go to the Settings app. I've got the Settings app bottom left here, top of my, of my home screen, and uh, I'm going to go to Wi-Fi, and you see my Wi-Fi network name there at the top. If you tap on the little I inside the circle, you'll get information about that Wi-Fi network. And you'll see your password. It's encrypted, of course, and it just shows the little dot. If you tap on that field, it will authenticate you, either Touch ID or Face ID, and actually show you the text of your Wi-Fi password. The overlay allows you to either copy or make the iPhone speak it out loud. Tip number two, also in settings, you can now show the battery percentage up in the status bar if you have an iPhone with Face ID. You'll notice in the upper right, cor upper right corner of my iPhone, it just shows the battery graphic with a, you know, just kind of filled in with an estimation of about how much charge is left. If in settings you go down to battery, you've got a couple of switches at the top. The top one is, is a new one for iOS 16 on iPhones with Face ID. You can turn that on, and now you see it has the battery filled in but a number in it instead. That gives you the percentage, if you so desire to see the number on your home screen. The third tip is also in settings and has to do with your keyboard. You have to go to the settings for sounds and haptics. It's in the second group down under your ID. And then scroll until you see keyboard feedback. Now, prior to iOS 16, 15 and earlier, there was sound feedback only could turn on keyboard clicks so as you typed on the keyboard on your on your iPhone it would make a little ticking noise now you've got both sound and haptic feedback your iPhone has a little haptic engine in it so it makes a little tiny vibration so if you'd like to feel something when you type as well as sound or one or the other here's where you can turn them on or off independently fourth tip is not in settings it's a new feature in photos for iOS 16. So I'm going to launch the photos app. I've got the photos app on my dock so I'm going to tap on it there to launch the photos app 
And at the bottom of the Photos interface, you'll see four icons, Library, For You, Albums, and Search. Tap on Albums, and it shows you your albums, shared albums, people and places and stuff. And you keep scrolling, it'll show you your different media types and the quantities of each that are in your library. If you keep going down to the very bottom, you've got a section called Utilities. And you can see Imports, Duplicates, Hidden, and Recently Deleted. Duplicates is what's new in iOS 16. So once you load it, it will do this in the background. It examines your library and looks for duplicate images. And if you tap on it, it you go to that interface and it, it says that I have 367 f duplicate photos and 12 duplicate videos. Man, oh man, I could save some space both in iCloud and on my devices. And if I scroll, you can see, sure enough, looks like they've got quite a number. Now it'll also sort out similars. You notice this, this section down here is a, I did a whole series of shots with a, with a moonrise. And some of them are different sizes. You can see, although it's, it seems to think they're the same image, they might be uh, slightly different. But, I mean, in terms of, they might be actually separate files that are not exactly the same, but they're similar enough that it sees them and will flag them for you. You'll notice that there is a merge button next to each set under the date. What will happen is that the uh, software will reconcile those two images. And it doesn't actually merge the pixels. It's kind of a misleading button in a way. What it does is it merges the metadata. So if like if you have a if you have a location for one and not the other, it'll keep the location of that of the one. It'll also keep the highest resolution version. Like you'll notice this one here, 382 kilobytes and the next one next to 1.1 megabyte. The 1.1 megabyte version of this duplicate is obviously probably the better quality one because there's more data in the file. If I tap on merge, it's going to merge these two items and it tells you what it's going to do here. So it uh, merging will keep one version of the duplicate, combining the highest quality and relevant data and moving the rest to recently deleted. So if I merge those two and they disappear from the duplicates, but if I go back to albums and go to recently deleted, it will show me uh, that one that it put in here. I got 29 days to reclaim it if I want. So duplicates in the Photos app is brand new. Now this is also coming to Photos on the Mac. So you may want to wait, especially if you use your Mac to download all the high resolution, uh, full resolution originals uh, and do the duplicate sorting there on your Mac once you get Mac OS 13 Ventura. Now my fifth and final Mac OS, or uh, sorry, iOS 16 quick tip. If you want to learn more about what's new and what you can do with iOS 16, guess what? There is a user guide. You just don't get it in a box because we don't buy software in a box anymore. But Apple makes it free in the Books app. So if I launch the Books app on my iPhone here, I can go to search, and I've already done a search here. I can type in iOS 16 user guide at the top. You'll see that, and the top result is iPhone user guide. Now, it doesn't say I, iOS 16's user guide, but each uh, version of iOS 16 has its own user guide for the iPhone, because iOS 16 is just the iPhone. So tap on that, and you'll notice in the cover, you'll see it says iOS 16. So this is the iOS 16 version of the iPhone user guide. And since I've already actually uh, uh, added this to my library, it just says download. If it, if you had if you've gone here for the first time, it'll just say get, I think, G E T, <laughs> or maybe it'll say buy. But it's free, so I have it on my iPad. I'm not going to download it on my iPhone here. But if I go to my library, I can see that it is there, iPhone user guide. And if I go farther down here, there's an older iPhone user guide from Apple, and that was the iOS 15 one. There's a version of the iPhone user guide for each version of iOS. And uh, that's five quick tips for iOS 16. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, I've got a tip to add on this. It's not an iOS 16 tip, but it's a tip that most people don't know about. It has to do with passwords. Let's say you have a network at your home. Okay, most of us have that. A friend of yours comes over. You want to give them network access. Well, normally that means identifying the network, giving them the password. 
oh my God, I'm giving up my password. What you do is you tell your friend, go in and join my network. When they do that on your phone, it will pop up and say, do you want to let so-and-so join the network? If you say yes, it issues them a temporary password that is good until they leave that area. Now, what's nice is, is if they come back, it activates again. The We did this with my daughter when she came to visit us. She has not been home for a year or two years. I've changed the password. She comes in and I said, "Hun, do you have Wi-Fi? She says, yes, absolutely. Okay. It knew who she was, knew I had changed the password and it all automatically. So this is a great way of temporarily giving access to somebody without giving out the password. It's something, and it's, it's buried inside the user guide. I mean, really buried. You have to hunt to find that one. But I found out it because it popped up and said, hey, do you want to grab this person? Okay, the next one is on Mac OS traffic lights. Um, to close, minimize, or go full screen? That is the que- that is a good question, Barry. Oh, by the way, for those of you who own iPads, the there is a feature of the iPad, which I was going to demonstrate and I totally forgot about till just now. If you're not using it, you're really wrong. And that is, if you see a little box in the window with three little dots in it, that box is a great addition because if you tap on that box, it asks you, do you want to have a full screen, half screen, or a sliding window so if i say half screen it splits the screen and it says go find the second application that you want to have on the second side of the screen you tap on that and it opens up automatically okay i'm going to show you the one reason to update to ios 16. this one feature alone makes the update worthwhile this right here is the search box before to get to the search box you had to go to the top and swipe down but for people like my wife who cannot do a swipe down nor remember a swipe down. The fact the search button is now right here and all you do is tap it and it brings up the search. That makes it so incredibly convenient for the people who can't figure out how to swipe down. So that is, to me, that is worth the entire upgrade. So let's move on. 